Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on electric circuits. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do the follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so we're going to start off with a little bit of a review or reminder about what we've talked about before. So first of all, we've talked about what is electricity, mainly that electricity, or in this case, electric current is more specific, uh, is the movement of charge. So here, if Homer is getting shocked, it's because there is charge, usually electrons, um, moving through the wire and through him, um, and that's why he's getting shocked. So we talked about electricity being electric current. It's measured in amperes, or amps for short. Uh, and we know that its variable is I, is the variable we use. And we define it as the amount of charge per a second that flows through a point. So in other words, we just think of how much charge flows each second. Is it one unit, two units, 20? And that's measured in coulombs per a second. Now, voltage, we briefly talked about, is the idea of the amount of energy there is per charge. So for each of these, we're talking about per charge, or kind of singular charge. Um, in this case, it's how much potential energy does this charge have to give off to uh, a resistor, to a light bulb, to Mario running across your screen, or whatever else it is. And resistance, we briefly discussed, or briefly mentioned, uh, measured in ohms, uh, which is this little horseshoe or omega symbol. And it's how hard it is for electricity to flow, hence the term resistance, having resist in there. We briefly discussed that electrons move because there's an electric field. So here an electron would be forced towards this uh, positively charged sphere because this produces an electric field and that pro applies a force to the electron. So all of that um, brought us this idea that batteries or other power sources provide electric fields that repel electrons out of the negative side through the light bulb and then into the positive side. And so that's why the electrons move. So we're going to start beginning with kind of some new stuff at this point. So when does electricity flow? We know that electric fields cause it to flow. Um, but when does that happen? And really, we've kind of already covered this to some degree, but we're going to explicitly talk about it now, as this idea of in order for electricity to flow, there must be a complete circuit. Now here, that often looks like a complete loop going through the light bulb and then back to the other side of the battery. Um, but in reality, it just means there needs to be an unbroken path from the positive side or the um, side with a high amount of or large amount of potential energy. Um, through one side, or through a device like a light bulb, and then all the way over here to the negative side, or the side or area with low amount of potential energy. Um, and so that's what a complete circuit is. So even if you were to kind of like split this battery in half and take half of the positive over here and the negative over there, it would still be a complete circuit because we have a complete path um, from a, a large amount of potential energy to a low amount of potential energy. Now, when we talk about potential energy, remember, voltage is potential energy per charge. Um, so really what we're talking about is high voltage to low voltage is really what's going on. So as long as there's a complete path from high voltage through the device all the way over here to low voltage, then we get a unbroken or complete or um, working circuit in this case. So I've used a few different terms, and I'm going to be more explicit about it, but a complete circuit is the same thing as a closed circuit, because it's a closed loop all the way around. Um, we often will call it a closed loop, as I just said, and it's unbroken. So all of those terms right here can be used to describe a circuit that is working, versus a circuit where this light bulb isn't lighting would be one where the circuit is broken, um, or open because there's this side that is open essentially. It's an open loop um, or just plain out broken. So the other part that I want to introduce you to is this idea that it's really hard to draw all of this stuff all the time. So oftentimes we're going to use schematics. A schematic is just a simplified diagram where symbols represent different things. In this case, this will be our symbol for a battery with the big line representing positive side and the small line representing the negative side. We'll use these straight lines as wires. That's nothing new. 
and then we'll use this circle with an X as a light bulb. Now this is the kind of UK or British or kind of European notation for a light bulb. In the United States we use a different one, um, but since IB physics bases it off of largely the British version of things or UK version of things, um, we'll use those. Here's some other common schematic symbols. So a battery would look like one of these, a light bulb would look like this, an LED, um, it's kind of one of those like small little colored lights, they often use them for energy saving uh, Christmas lights or things along those lines, uh, looks like this. And then a resistor, we'll talk more about those, looks like this. That's it, three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow up questions on Google Forms.